All right, as, as people uh, continue to come in, share a few announcements. Um, first, if, if you get the church email, uh, you saw that we're conducting a survey and we'd love for you to uh, be a part of that survey. And this will help our steering group um, uh, take all of the really complicated uh, factors into account um, in discerning together how to come back together in person um, in this next season. Um, uh, some of you uh, were quick to do that already, uh, and we're thankful for that. If you haven't had a chance, um, if you have 10 or 15 minutes this afternoon, go ahead and do that, um, and that'll help us out immensely. Uh, we'd love to hear your voice, your concerns, your ideas, uh, and uh, it'll be a great way to um, also uh, highlight uh, folks who uh, want to be a part of, of creative solutions for this coming season uh, of being together safely. Uh, we'll drop a link into the comments section. Uh, Meg didn't send me a picture, so I grabbed this screenshot, but um, uh, Meg, you, do you want to talk about a new Godly Play lesson that's up? Sure. Um yeah, it's uh, it's Pentecost, which is very exciting. Um, the Red Sunday, of course. Um, and it's the final lesson in knowing Jesus in a new way. So we start at Easter and we go all, all the way through until Pentecost. Um, and it's it's a good one. It's a fun one. And, and that, of course, is geared towards kids, but also probably for everyone. If, if you're um, looking to find out more about this season, if, if these seasons are unfamiliar to you, um, that would be an awesome primer and in, in way in. Uh, Christian, do you have any uh, updates or, or news uh, for music ministry? Uh, nothing different, but if you're interested in playing a song on Sunday or getting LinkedIn recording projects, just email me and I'll try to spread more recording stuff pretty soon. So thanks. Excellent. Uh, everyone looks good in their red. Um, as Meg mentioned, today is the Feast of Pentecost. It is uh, also the birthday of the church, um, the time when um, uh, the Spirit came upon uh, believers and um, hasn't stopped uh, even to this day. Um, <laughs> uh, if you'll join me for our call to worship, you can join me with the bold face. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, at the beginning of time you moved over the face of the waters you gave every living thing the breath of life. Come, Creator Spirit, and renew the whole creation. Holy Spirit, voice of the prophets, you inflame men and women with a passion for your truth. And through them, you call your people to the ways of justice and compassion. Come, Spirit of righteousness, and burn in our hearts. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, by your power, Jesus came to bring good news to the poor and release to those held captive. Come, liberating Spirit, and free us from the powers of sin and death. Holy Spirit, advocate, teacher, you speak to us of our Lord and show us the depth of his love. Come, Spirit of truth, abide in us and lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, wind and flame, you filled the disciples with joy and courage, empowering them to preach your word and to share your good news. Come, Spirit of power, make us bold witnesses of your redeeming love. Holy Spirit, Spirit of peace, you break down barriers of language, race, and culture, and heal the divisions that separate us. Come, reconciling spirit, and unite us all in the love of Christ. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, 
At the close of the age, all creation will be renewed to sing your praises. Come, Creator Spirit, and make us new creations. In Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, As has become our custom and a way to connect and to share in the peace of Christ, Rach is going to share a uh, breakout room prompt for y'all. All right, in a couple of minutes, we're going to send you guys to breakout rooms with four or five other households, and it's a time to um, exchange a sign of Christ's peace, and the discussion prompt for today are, is, what have been your most creative quarantine communion elements? We've had everybody participating in communion in their homes, and sometimes you just end up, you don't want bread and wine, so what have you grabbed that has been random or fun or resourceful? And we'll bring you back in about four minutes.
Everyone should be back in in the next 10 or so seconds. As everyone's coming back in, this is probably a good uh, reminder that you can gather uh, communion elements for later when we share in the Lord's Supper together. Um, it's not necessarily an invitation towards obscurity, uh, but but <laughs> if you have something that's uh, that is bread and juice or wine, or is like bread or juice or wine, we also give Steph Homer credit for that uh, that icebreaker question that was that came came from her mind uh, for us. We've mostly been using juice and bread over here, but I think there was a biscuit Sunday and I think there was a green juice Sunday. Uh, so desperate times call for desperate measures. Um, are y'all, will you give me a thumbs up if you're seeing my uh, screen share, if you're seeing slides? Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite Christian DuPont to lead us. Uh, in our song together. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. For He who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, is his name. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, for He who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy, 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 holy is His name. has done great things for me. Holy, 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 holy is His name. You all pray with me. Lord God, on this 
feast of Pentecost, we ask that your spirit fall afresh upon us, upon this weary and embattled land, upon our wearied souls and bodies. Lord, you come to us in wind that we don't know where it's coming and don't know where it's going. Help us have eyes and ears to see your movements of healing and peacemaking and justice bringing and truth telling. Lord, you come to us as fire. It's easy to see um, uh, this destructive and purifying fire these days. Uh, you showed up to Moses in the burning bush that doesn't consume or Daniel in, um, in uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and you were with them in the fire. You showed up to your people in a pillar of smoke by day and fire by night. Spirit, um, help us see into this fire and, and know your presence with us. Lord Jesus, you give us your spirit, your spirit of truth. And you say that we'll worship in spirit and truth and help us uh, by that spirit have courage to know the truth, even the truth about ourselves that's ugly. Give us courage to um, confess and repent uh, we might repent of the ways that we're complicit with the systems of sin and death, and white supremacy and powers and principalities that we join with that are against your will and your work in this world. Lord, speak unity in the same way that you, you brought unity into the tongues of Babel. Uh, at, on the day of Pentecost, that we might understand each other, that we might listen to each other, that we might speak each other's language, that we might know you in our diversity. In spirit of resurrection, you are in us, and you are the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, when we are weary and dead and despairing, Help us hope in your power to raise us to newness of life. When we don't have words, gather our groans so that uh, the Father might hear them and work on our behalf. Renew us in the same way that you renewed that valley of dry bones, reconnecting and invigorating, bringing new life. We thank you on this on this day of Pentecost, this day of great hope, because your spirit, the advocate, is with us. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite Justin Farmer to read our Pentecost reading from Acts 2. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all of the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God. Blessed are the ones who do not bury all the broken pieces of their heart. Blessed are the tears of all the pain, pouring like a sky of falling stars. Blessed are the wounded ones in holy, brave enough to show the Lord their scars. Blessed are the hurts that are not hidden, open to the healing touch of God. The kingdom is yours. The kingdom is yours. Hold on a little more. This is not the end. Hope is in the Lord. Keep your eyes on it. Blessed are the ones who walk in kindness, even in the face of great abuse. Blessed are the needs that go unnoticed, serving with unguarded gratitude. Blessed are the ones who fight for justice, longing for the coming day of peace. Blessed is the soul that thirsts for righteousness, welcoming the last lost beliefs. The kingdom is yours. The kingdom is yours. Hold on a little more. This is not the end. Hope is in the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him. Blessed are the ones who suffer by Still have strength to love their enemies. Blessed is the faith of those who persevere. So they fall, they hold on no defeat. The kingdom is yours. The kingdom is yours. Hold on a little more. This 
This is not the end. Hope is in the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him. The kingdom is yours. The kingdom is yours. Hold on a little more. This is not the end. Hope is in the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him. Invite Elizabeth and Brian to lead us in our responsive psalm, Psalm forty three. Establish justice for me, God. Argue my case against ungodly people. Rescue me from the dishonest and unjust. Because you are my God, my protective fortress. Why have you rejected me? Why do I have to walk around sad, oppressed by my enemies? Send your light and your truth. Those who will guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Let me come to God's altar. Let me come to God, my joy, my delight. Then I will give you thanks with the lyre, God, my God. Why, I ask myself, are you so depressed? Why are you so upset inside? Hope in God, because I will again give him thanks my saving presence in my God. Well, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I am very struck by how timely all of the readings and songs feel today, at least for me, it um, is a source of hope and encouragement um, in a really crazy week, um, both at home and abroad. Um, yeah, and so with this next song, as I was reflecting on it, um, I was thinking about how in my, like, personal prayer practices, I really, um, I really think about, oh, what, what title do I want to give God today, and, like, how will that shape how I'm thinking, and I think the ones that this song gives are really, really timely, um, so I hope that as we sing together and reflect, um, maybe take this time as a moment to pray and see how how we, God um, how you want God to show up in these various ways in your life and in the world right now. Let our souls rejoice on high for the advocate. For the advocate, let our tongues proclaim what's right by the mercy given, by the mercy given. We will all be changed someday. We will all be changed. We will all be changed someday by the advocate, by the mercy giver. Let our hands be lifted up to the promise keeper, to the promise keeper. Let our knees untouch the ground. For the faithful one, for the faithful one, we will all be changed someday. We will all be changed. We will all be changed someday by the promise keeper, by the faithful one. Bye, yeah, 
Thanks, Grace. So this morning, we're joined by a special guest preacher, uh, Dr. Chris Green. And um, I've known of uh, Chris Green via social media for some time, but uh, the farmers, Jessica and Justin, uh, know him personally from their time in Lakeland, Florida, uh, Southeastern University. And um, right now, Dr. Green is in flux. Um, headed uh, somewhere uh, else, somewhere even unknown to him. So this is kind of a um, liminal season for he and his family. Uh, we're so excited to have him join us. Um, and again, one of the uh, great gifts of this time of doing digital church. So he, he's going to pick up uh, where we left off last week in our exploration of the uh, creed uh, we're calling this series, We Believe, and it's growing in faith and faithfulness. And he's going to pick up with the, the uh, uh, line that's not the easiest assignment that I gave him of, we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. So without further ado, Chris, uh, take it away. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation. And I know it says more about Justin and Jessica than it does even about me. They, uh, their goodwill, hopefully I'm not uh, going to damage any of that goodwill, <laughs> Jessica and Justin, <laughs> today. Um, but it is, uh, it, it really is a joy to be with you and got to meet a few folks in the breakout session. And Chris, I, I really appreciate you trusting me in this moment, not only with this topic from the creed, but just in this moment, in our in our nation in the moment we're, we're living together and I am going to speak to that but I want to come to that at the end I, I want to start just talking a little bit about my my relationship to Mary Jesus mother so I was raised in a a very conservative rural Oklahoma independent Pentecostal church and I could regale you with stories about that for, for days and days. I won't. But to say that I, I was, of course, raised to do my devotions, to pray every day. And one, one day, one night, in, in my bedroom, by my bed, kneeling down like I was taught to do, I am doing my devotions, and suddenly I started singing. So in my tradition, this is not that unusual for Pentecostals to sing in the Spirit. And, and so at first I realized what it was. Um, and then suddenly I realized that I didn't know what it was because I was singing to Mary in gratitude for having given us Jesus. I was very young. I was eight or nine, probably, maybe 10, and completely overtaken by it because it's we were not only not Catholics, we were anti-Catholics. In fact, I've said since then, I think Justin has heard me say, that we had a kind of 
unspoken list of the worst possible people in the world. And at the very top of that list was Roman Catholic, right? So below that, you know, Roman Catholic was above like serial killer in our world. And so for me to be singing to Mary was, it felt Catholic to me. There's a great story I, I heard once about a man who had never been to, been out of his county. He was from Georgia, never been out of his county. He goes on a mission trip, mission trip to Latin America. He's in Brazil in this cathedral and there's this massive statue of Mary above the altar. And the guide says to him, what do you think about that? And he says, feels a little Catholic to me. That's, that's what that experience was like for me. It felt a little too Catholic. And I didn't tell my parents about it. I didn't tell anyone about it. In fact, I didn't talk about it with anyone until a few years ago. And what brought it out of me is my grandmother, with whom I was really close, died on the day after my 40th birthday. And I suddenly found myself painting and drawing Mary. And do you have some of those, Chris, that we can share real quick? Here are some of the pieces that I've done on, on Mary, just to give you a sense of it. Uh, the, a lot of them are line drawings. A couple of them are paintings. You can just move through them, Chris, um, pretty quickly. This is one of, so the, you, can you go back to that one just for a second? So normally we see Mary holding the dead Jesus, and this is a kind of reversal of that, where Jesus is holding his, his mother. Um, you can go through the rest. Um, here's Mary you know, with child. These are, the next couple are kind of uh, multimedia pieces that I did. They're collages. So this is one, the Sacred Heart of Mary. And what you have there is a list of ways that people died. Yeah, it's a, in the Middle Ages and, and early modern period, cities like London, this is from London, would publish um, kind of diaries of, of the ways people died. So that's a list there. And then the root system growing out of her heart. Uh, you can go through the others now. This is a poster from the U.S. government for the internment of the Japanese that is that I've collaged with an, a Japanese icon of Mary. You can show the, the rest of them. <clears throat> this particular piece, I should probably say a little bit about it, that writing is from a book that was written a long time ago that included illustrations of writings of the quote-unquote insane and that's what's collaged over it and this is of course Mary another line drawing Mary destroying the serpent stepping on the head of the stomping on the head of the serpent so I I found myself kind of drawing and painting Mary and then I felt suddenly like kind of drawn to this realization that Mary models for us the prophetic life. And so for me, I don't think it's at all unfitting. I think it's, it's a very appropriate that we're talking about Mary on the day of Pentecost in the midst of this moment of, of horrific reflection on the horrors of our own history and our own present. And so what I want to do in the next just couple of minutes is talk a little bit about how I think she models for us the Pentecostal life, how she models for us the way of living as people of the Spirit. And in Luke 1 and 2, my reflections will come from there. So first, there, there's a lot to say here. In fact, I... I am writing a book about this. I don't know when it will be done. If I don't have a job soon, it might be done sooner than later. But the the theme of the book is is Mary as prophet. And the title that I've proposed that I'm working with is that we're to imitate Mary, the imitation of Mary, in living the prophetic life, that we become most like Jesus by learning to be prophetic in the way that she is. So in... In Luke 1, we get the visitation of the angel to her. The, the angel suddenly appears. And there's so much to say about it, of course. But Luke is very careful to point out the ways in which 
her visitation is the culmination of, of visitations to, uh, to Israel's prophets. And Justin could talk about this for days and days, right? The ways in which the, the language that is used by the angel recalls visitations to Isaiah and visitations to Gideon, the judge from, from earlier in, in Israel's history. And so Mary is seen in Luke's telling as the last in the line of Israel's prophets anticipating the coming of the Messiah. And of course, the Messiah comes to her uniquely, and the word of God about the Messiah comes to her uniquely, because it comes to her in the person of her own son, right? And in the Christian tradition, we say that Mary is the mother of God. So all of the other prophets are, in a sense, pregnant with the word of God, but she's uniquely, fully pregnant with the word of God. And then she models for us what that means, and, it, and her modeling begins with the acceptance of that burden, with the acceptance, with the acceptance, the consent to the burden. There's a, a passage in, in the prophets, Jeremiah says that the word of God is in him like a fire shut up in his bones. And people in my tradition, they love to preach about fire being shut up in their bones, but that's not a pleasant experience. Right? I can't imagine that having fire in your bones is, is anything that you want. And Mary has to know in accepting this burden, that she's accepting fire into her bones. Like she's consenting to have her own life opened up to the work of God in the midst of the world. And as her song will point out, she knows what that means. And she consents to it. And then in her song, which comes a, a bit later, she, well, before I get to that, let me, let me say something about really quickly about what she does after she receives this word. She rushes to her cousin Elizabeth's house. And what we read is as soon as Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting, the child leaps in her womb, in, in Elizabeth's womb, and Elizabeth is filled with the Spirit. And then later we're told that John is filled with the Spirit from this moment too. And what I love about this is that Mary shows us that the prophetic life, the truly Spirit-filled life, is not about you and me personally receiving the Spirit. It's about giving the Spirit to others. That the truly prophetic life is not about what God has done for me, but is about what God is doing for you. And she, Mary, just with her greeting, pours out the Spirit on Elizabeth. And she's not trying to do it. She's not trying to be prophetic. She's not trying to be a, a, any, in, even a blessing. She's just in need. But because she carries this word in her, just by being honest, just by acknowledging her own neediness, she actually pours out life on, on Elizabeth. And this, I think, is a mark that God is at, at work in us, that God is alive in us, that we don't have to try to be prophetic. We don't have to try to be Christian. We can just be human. And what comes out of us, even in the acknowledgement of our own neediness, is the gift of God, is the life of God. It, it flows out of us, right? As Jesus says in John, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And that's exactly what happens with Mary. And then she sings. And her song, I think, is a song that if we truly understood it, we would know what we're experiencing today in our nation. If we knew what this song meant, it would interpret for us what is happening. It would, it would bring it into context. Because what she says is that God has scattered the proud, he's brought down the powerful, he's lifted up the lowly, he's filled the hungry, and he's sent the rich away empty. This is a recognition. Mary's celebrating the coming of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that will disrupt our order. And I, and I don't have time to wade into it. And I'm not sure that I, that I even need to. But I do think that part of what we're witnessing right now is the destabilization of an order. And the question is, do we love order or do we love God and our neighbor? Do we love order or do we want the kingdom? I mean, we pray, let your kingdom come. But for the kingdom to come means for our, our order to be disordered. And I think that this... A crucial point is that there's the demonic disorder, which destroys surely for the sake of destruction. And then there's the prophetic disorder, 
which creates space for the kingdom to come, for a new order to come. And that's what Mary celebrates. So this, Mary is often pictured in Christian iconography and in Christian preaching as this meek, submissive, quiet soul. But her song is not meek and submissive and quiet. This is a defiant, bold declaration of the violence of grace that overcomes all of our violence. The, the ways in which God's goodness, God's anger, overcomes all that is evil in our world and all that we're we're wrongly angry about and takes everything that is we're justly angry about and brings about our hopes so it, it's a it's an incredible song but lastly in my last couple minutes i'll point to what happens when she presents she and joseph together present their son present jesus to the priest to to simeon simeon says to mary this child your child is destined for the falling and rising of many and to be a sign that will be opposed uh, the king james i think is a sign of contradiction that will reveal the inner thoughts of many and a sword will pierce your own soul too and i think you know in a broad sense what's being said here is that mary will suffer with jesus but specifically what's being said is that she will suffer when her own inner thoughts are revealed. And this, I think, more than anything, or at least as much as anything, is what Mary teaches us about what it truly means to be a prophetic people, is that we let the sword of the word of the Lord that comes from us pierce us too. That we... We say not only to others, this is what God says of you, but we recognize in everything we're saying of others, it's true too of us. That, that our word of judgment against the other is always a word of judgment also against ourselves. And I think this is, this is exactly what Simeon prophesies will happen to Mary and what Mary lives. So how does that relate to what we're experiencing right now? I, I, I'm sure like many of you, I... On Monday, last week, saw the video of the murder of George Floyd and heard him over and over and over saying, I can't breathe. But at the end, what he was saying was, Mama, Mama. And I thought immediately uh, all kinds of things. But one of the things I, I thought is that this is... This pain that I'm feeling watching this murder is nothing compared to what his mother would have felt. She died a couple of years ago. But the reason I was so quick to think about that is because after the shooting of Ahmed Arbery, I, my wife, Julie, had a dream about Ahmed's mother. Wanda is her name. We don't, of course, know her, but watching her on the news and seeing the story of her son being shot in the, in the streets... Julie had a dream. She woke me up in the middle of the night to share with me that she had seen Wanda sitting in her room at night in the dark, holding herself alone, crying quietly, and that Julie had had this realization that she's just missing her son, that she just wants her son. And what I felt like God said to me is that nothing will change until our dreams change, until we learn to feel this pain the way mothers feel this pain and I think that is what Mary models for us that when you suffer you have to suffer the way a mother suffers we're not bystanders we're not observers these are our children that this is happening to and our children that are doing it these these are our flesh and blood and to be a people of Pentecost is to acknowledge that and to live from that place, to live from that place of deep woundedness. Because at the end of the day, the upper room of Pentecost is really the lowest point, not the highest. It's the point of deepest compassion, the deepest solidarity, the deepest openness to the suffering of others. And from that place, the spirit flows. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for this opportunity to share what's stirring in my heart with these new friends. 
and a couple of old ones. God, I pray that you will take us to the upper room that is the lowest point and pierce our hearts too with the sword so that out of our compassion, not the compassion of observers or bystanders, but the compassion of mothers, the compassion of your mother, which is your compassion, out of that, God, let flow your life, your creativity, your forgiveness, your joy, your anger, your justice. God, I pray this for Pastor Chris and, and everyone else at, at Oak Church and everyone whose life is touched by everyone who's hearing what I'm saying. God, I pray that you let your justice flow out of us, not because we're trying to be prophetic and not because we're trying to be Christian or do the right thing, but simply by being who we are and suffering with those who suffer, we are allowing your spirit to pour out of us. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Um, now is the time in our worship gathering where we offer uh, prayers of the people. And in a second, I'm going to invite Steph to lead that for us. Um, uh, I know a lot has been uh, spoken about how heavy this week has been. And I know that um, uh, there are different um, weights of that and timelines of that and uh, different even personal griefs that compound um, our corporate grief. And so um, well, one thing that was shared for me this week, because um, on top of this stuff, I, I've lost a really good friend this week, uh, but um, Matt Hoffman had shared with me from Romans uh, eight twenty six about the Spirit's ministry of gathering up our groans too deep uh, for words um, and presenting them to God for us. So I, I invite you during this um, prayers of the people time, if, if you can articulate um, your prayer, uh, by all means do and, and unmute yourself and share that. Um, if you can't, um, that's okay. Uh, the Spirit is doing that work on your behalf. Jesus uh, as we celebrated last week in the Feast of the Ascension, sits at the Father's right hand and is relaying these um, as if they were his own prayers. Um, so uh, I just invite you in this time to open your hearts uh, up to God as we open them uh, before each other and join our prayers together. All right, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation. By the promised gift of your Holy Spirit, shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, your, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So we'd love for you to join us in prayer. Um, like Chris said, if you can articulate your prayer, we invite you to unmute your computer and to speak it aloud. And when you finish your prayer, you can say, Lord, in your mercy. Um, and then you can close with here our prayer. Lord, it's hard to know what the words are um, to say that could possibly be sufficient to describe um, how egregious our national and collective sin of racism really is. And I just pray that our hearts will be turned towards you and towards our brothers and sisters, um, towards our family members and friends whose hearts are hard towards the situation um, and towards our brothers and sisters who are terrorized by the situation. God, we just ask that you will lead us into repentance. I'm encouraged um, by growth that I've seen and 
um, increased compassion that I've seen in friends and relatives. Um, I just pray that you will continue to shed light on the truth of our national situation when it comes to race and police and the lack of justice um, and the complete lack of mercy uh, that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, thank you so much for the words of Dr. Green this morning, for the way that he honored the mothers of the people who have lost their lives due to this violence. God, I ask that you remind all of us that when we look to your face that we should not see a white old man. No matter what the artists have showed us over thousands of years and that you did not send your son in the body of the majority or those in power but in the body of an oppressed minority. God, I ask that you would break us of the illusion that our whiteness is reflected in you. And God, I ask that you would be with Eva and Simeon who do not deserve to grow up less safe than James and Sam and our other children. God, I ask that you would help us consent to this discomfort for even a fraction of the moment that our Black brothers and sisters have to experience this. God, I pray that you would help us repent of the ways that we attach ourselves to our privilege as white people, because it is only when we are willing to relinquish our comfort and our power to those who have none, that we will see this change. God, I know that you are here. And I thank you. And I ask that even though I trust your grace and your peace and your love, that I would not seek to supplant those and to hide in comfort and the ability to be soothed when there are so many who do not have that luxury. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, please forgive me of my own sins and my own biases. Um, and Lord, may myself and others, um, may you reveal to us how to respond in supportive and just ways, whatever that looks like for each of us individually, as well as a collective group. Repentance is also on my mind, Lord. Um, in the same day as I cry and I'm angry, that same day I feel defensive in, in words I read or um, voices I hear from African American leaders. And I just ask that you would open my heart and my ears and my eyes um, to listen without responding, to listen without um, feeling the need to put my voice in there too, and to, um, to just listen and believe. God, and I just ask that um, would bless the African-American leaders who are speaking right now 
I ask that you would give them strength um, from their families and their communities. And I ask that um, you would help me personally know how to show up in, in, in ways where I don't feel paralyzed, but that I can um, show up and, and show that I, I want to believe and, and contribute to a just society. God, I ask that you would help me to mourn like a mother, um, even though I'm scared to, because that would bring a lot of change and would change the way I look at the world in a very visceral way, and that would bring pain and frustration, um, and no one really wants that. So I ask that you would help me to get over myself um, and your kingdom would come and you would help me to um, realize a visceral empathy that would enact and enable change through your spirit. Lord, I um, lift up um, my friend Mike's friends and family. Uh, his mom and his girlfriend, Sarah. Um, both um, trust, like Psalm 126 says that um, the uh, planting is done with tears and um, the harvest is done with shouts of joy. Uh, so help us wait in that in between as we um, plant in grief, uh, trusting in the power of your spirit in the power of your resurrection and in the power of your lordship over all creation, that you are strong in weakness and that you have won a victory um, even as we look around and don't see um, all the evidence of that um, grow us in faith, um, that we uh, might join you in that work. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, I pray for Dave Crisfell at Jubilee Home and for the wonderful and brave work he does there. And I pray that we can support him and other young men and women like him who really step out of their comfort zone, their zone of safety and, and really live your word every day. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, I um, I pray for my friends and dear brothers, Anthony and Darian. Uh, it's very easy to look at the issues on a macro scale, on a, in a big picture and not uh, connect to it personally, but uh, they are dear friends of mine and strong black men of faith and 
barrier image uh, very well. And um, I pray for their protection. I pray for their peace. Um, I pray for the near constant fear and anguish they have to live in. And uh, I just pray that as a friend and as a brother, um, you can show me how to share that burden with them, how to carry that weight and to um, just experience your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, um, you've said in your word that eyes that see and ears that hear are gifts from you. And um, we know that a good father gives his children what they ask for. And so I ask for us that you would, that you would gift us eyes that see and ears that hear. And I'd also ask that you, that you would enlarge our hearts so that they could hold sorrow, um, our own and that of others. In Jesus' name, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for your comfort um, for those of us who are afraid and who are hurting for ourselves or for those that we love. But for those of us who are white, I also ask that you won't let us be too comfortable, that we won't be too comfortable with this injustice and um, with our sin of racism. God, I really want to pray for pro the protesters right now. Um, I just pray for their safety. Um, I pray for their courage. And I pray um, for truthful reporting, which feels like almost never happens. Um, it's so hard to know what actually ha is happening there, even when you're on the ground. Um, I've seen some suggestions from activists who I follow that alt-right members are actually hijacking the protests, making them a lot more dangerous and confusing the purposes and the goals of the protesters, making it more dangerous for them too and for the um, police and for the downtowns and for the businesses that are impacted. 
I just pray that you will, um, that you'll show us what's true and that we'll be slow to pass judgment on, um, on people who are seeking justice and on people who, um, who have faced lifetimes and generations of oppression that I can't even begin to imagine even when I try. So God, we ask how long, how long is, will this go on? And when will you make it end, um, the injustice? And we seek true peace that's not based on silencing those who are hurting or dismissing those who are hurting, but that's based on actually repairing and repenting and restoring the wrongs that have happened and repenting in such a way that we develop accountability and systems and um, and just recreate our imaginations in ways that are just and loving and true. We ask these things in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. we continue our prayers together, I invite you to join me as we confess together. Spirit of God, you are the breath of creation, the wind of change that blows through our lives, opening us up to new dreams and new hopes, new life in Jesus Christ. Forgive us our closed minds which barricade themselves from your presence preferring what we know to what we might want to do to, to what you might want to do through us tomorrow. Forgive our closed eyes, which fail to see the needs of your world, blind to opportunities of service and love. Forgive our closed hands, which clutch our gifts and our wealth for our use alone. Forgive us our closed hearts, which limit our affections to ourselves and our own. Spirit of new life, forgive us and break down the prison walls of our selfishness that we might be open to your love and open to loving service in your world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to join me in confession of our belief, our faith in the faithful God. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite you to gather those communion elements from your pantry. This is a beautiful opportunity to celebrate the Spirit's work of gathering from diverse and particular places and working that into unity in the Spirit. The night that Jesus was betrayed and would suffer. He ate with his disciples to celebrate the Passover feast. The Passover was a meal of remembrance. And they would remember God's faithfulness and God's freedom from their captivity in Egypt into a newness of life. Jesus took bread. He blessed it, giving thanks to the Father. And he broke it 
and he gave it to them. He said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. A little while later, he also took the cup and likewise, he blessed it and he gave thanks to them. He offered it to him and said, this is the cup of my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant shed for the sins of many. As often as you do this, remember me. You all pray with me. Lord, we give you thanks for these gifts. Ordinary things, uh, bread, juice, that you make extraordinary. Christ, body and blood, broken and poured out on the cross for us. This spirit-filled meal, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and fills us, offering us newness of life. Lord, will you um, make us what we eat, uh, filled with your spirit, parts of your body, scattered throughout this place um, and all sorts of places with different gifts and different abilities, but all gathered um, to animate your body working in this world, your body working for peace and justice, your body um, overflowing with the gifts of your spirit, love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. We thank you for these manifold gifts. Help us be um, faithful uh, stewards of these gifts and generous givers of these gifts. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. This is Christ's body and Christ's blood for you. I'll invite uh, Chris to offer us uh, a benediction as we go. Thanks again, Chris, for the invitation. And what I would like to do is is end by drawing attention back to Mary's song. And so my prayer for all of you today is that you will rejoice in God. Specifically because he has brought you low. And that you will rejoice that God is scattering the proud. Bringing down the powerful. Raising up the lowly. Feeding the hungry. And sending the rich away empty. God, we rejoice in your work. We suffer with those who suffer so we can rejoice with those who rejoice. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Uh, it was a joy to have you with us today. And I want to, um, again, remind everyone before you drop off uh, to fill out the survey. You can get to that at oakdurham.org slash survey, uh, and that'll help our leaders uh, lead with uh, wisdom and discernment and the uh, most amount of information from you all um, uh, as we uh, figure out uh, how and when and what configuration that we uh, can start to put these pieces back together in the remainder of 2020. Uh, so um, 10 or 15 minutes would be an immense gift uh, to our process in that. So thank you so much. Um, and y'all can hang around on the call and talk amongst yourselves, show off your, your red garb or uh, share. Uh, be sure to share pictures of your uh, birthday cake for the church uh, if you have them. Uh, we'd love to see them. Uh, thanks, y'all. Thanks again. Justin, good to see you. Jessica, I'll see Thank you guys you. soon. Good to see you. Talk to you later. Bye.
So good to see all.